Hello again, uh, this is Hollis Turnbow and welcome again to Quilt is Desired. In this show I have a lot of very exciting things and very interesting things for you. I'll talk more about the selection of the design, the, the placement of the design, uh, appropriateness of it, how to adjust the design, especially the borders. So stay with us, it's going to be interesting. Welcome back to Quilt as Desired. I'm Hollis Turnbow, and in this episode I want to walk deeper and deeper into this aspect of learning more about the quilting motif and quilting designs. More about the selection, the appropriateness of it, how you make so those adjustments that you might need to. So stay with us, this is going to be very interesting. I've talked a lot about uh, specific designs and uh, especially mentioned at one time or other the double wedding ring. Here's an example. The stencils are usually made in the two most popular sizes and that's the 15 inch ring and the 18 inch ring. This stencil was scaled for the 18 inch ring and these are obviously smaller. So my stencil doesn't work there but it's an interesting uh, thing that happened when I put it down onto the onto the quilt here, this center just fits within the center here. So don't overlook the possibility that parts of your stencil or your quilting motif may be appropriate. Here's another example here. When I first selected this, I started to put mark and put a design into the pattern fabric here, but I realized that you absolutely could not see it. So since these were solid, by quilting only in the solid hexagons here, it gives excellent texture to your quilt. Another example, a very simple crib quilt here. When selecting the design, think about the compatibility and the number of ways that you can repeat that design onto your uh, quilt. That gives some cohesion to it. This one I made just out of strips of fabric that had hearts in it, so that became my theme then. So I happen to have a stencil, continuous line design, that was hearts, very easy to quilt. So I quilted that down into the two strips on the side. Then to carry out the compatibility theme, I took two stencils, or I took one stencil and I used the center here and just flipped it. So hearts here that I quilted, a quilting stencil, more hearts, and then I flipped it here. So I have an overall compatibility to the quilting design and to this piece. A very simple quilt, but turned out to be very effective using just the one stencil. I did another one that was just uh, the rainbow stripes, and trying to make a decision about how to quilt it, was not quite sure how much I really wanted to do. So I had a stencil that was this leaf pattern. What I did is I drew it on paper, went to the copy machine, and uh, duplicated several copies of that into the size that I thought I would use. And then I laid it across the quilt like this to see how much adjustment I might need to make to make it fit. Because when you have a pattern as you have here, adjustments are very easy because you could add or subtract just a bit within between each of these leaves and still you'll have a continuity of the design. I even considered putting a smaller one in the small stripes here, but thought that would be just a little bit more work than I wanted to do, even though it would have been a very uh, compatible uh, design. So one easy way to make an adjustment that, especially if you have a design as I have here, that's regular but easy to adjust without seeing those adjustments, then make a copy. If you can see very closely 
what happened is after I did each repeat, I had to add a quarter of an inch between each one. This tells me now that when I lay this down on the quilt and start marking it, every repeat I need to add a quarter of an inch. So I would mark and just slide the stencil and continue marking. So by doing a sample like this to begin with, it helps you later when you're actually marking with the stencil. Another example, which I don't have a quilt of, was I used this design uh, for a quilt. Again, all I'm concerned about is the regularity. So my stencil had a nice repeat, and I added a little bit right in here. But by doing first on a sample of uh, paper, then you know where you can make those adjustments. I love to work with designs like this, the, 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 the leaves and those, because wherever you make adjustments, it's okay, because what your eye sees is the flow and the regularity. I've also discussed uh, 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 a lot about those instances in which you find a directional stencil. And I've talked about how you need at some point to change the direction of that stencil. I found two stencils that uh, illustrate that very, uh, uh, very well. Here's one that the direction goes this way. So it means that everything comes up into the corner. So down here somewhere, I need to change the direction. And I just simply flip the stencil like this. And it doesn't make any difference what this motif turns out to be. It can be long, it can be short. Because I know that the top and bottom will be the same and the two sides will be the same. So again, that adjustment needs to keep a flow with your eye. Very simple tricks and tips on making uh, very simple adjustments. Now, I talked earlier about the compatibility of designs. And on the table, which I've had here, is a very simple Amish uh, a square and a square design. And I have a series of stencils here that I want to show how I used that in making uh, the, creating the overall design. It's rather interesting and I chuckle at myself thinking that I've designed stencils so I'm going to do a series of stencils and then make a quilt to fit. But it didn't work that way because when I got out into bands and borders, I still had to do the same adjustment that everyone does. But let me show this and it will give you an idea of the compatibility of designs. Here's the center. Very simple stencil, has a little hole down here, and the idea is to take, put a pin there, mark around until you have a complete circle. So very easy stencil to make a center medallion within this type quilt. Then if you'll notice here, I have a particular design in this band and in this band. And I have two stencils. that illustrate that. So somewhere out in the quilt, I'm going to have the same design that you find in the center. So again, even though it's a combining a lot of designs together, I have some compatibility. So this one would go into this band here, and then this one came into this sashing strip out here. Now, what do I do with this section here? I simply took another design that I had used in the center like this and moved it out into this triangular section here. So again, I have some compatibility, compatibility here. And the idea is, is combining a number of different motifs. Here is another center that has a possibility. If I w didn't want something as fancy as this, I could put grid in the center. But I chose to use this one because it had a little bit more class to it than this one. But then when I came to the outer uh, border, it became more of a challenge because it was a wider space. I knew that my stencil would not fit. So what I did is I drew a number of repeats of that particular design and put it down on the quilt 
Uh, thus so. And saw exactly where it came into the center. Now because it's a directional stencil, I knew that I would have to flip it at some point. But again, how much space would I have down there where I flipped it? I discovered that in order to make this center section come out in a reasonable orderly fashion, that I would need to add a little bit of space in here. Actually a quarter of an inch it told me that I'd hear in order to bring this down into a, a uniform way along each section. So again, by making a pattern first, laying it down, making the adjustment, measuring it, it told me what kind of, what kind of adjustment I need to make. So do that first. It's almost like the carpenters measure three times and then cut once. You know, do this. Make copies, play with it a little bit, and then you'll know exactly how your space is going to fill. Stay with us, because I want to dig a little bit deeper into the idea of quilt as desired. Actually doing some adjustment, show you how I did it on another quilt, another example, and then ultimately stencil was cut to fill a very special space. So stay with us. <music>